all right let's do the hands on for s3 life cycle let's go to s3 first we need to create a bucket we'll be doing everything from the scratch let's click on create bucket we'll give the bucket name cloud guru amit 007 james bond so let's scroll down a bit and yep create a bucket we are not doing any kind of fancy work okay this number has been taken uh, i don't know like my name many people are using nowadays <laughs> made me famous oh no okay they shouldn't be creating containing any kind of upper case so okay let's uh, do cloud guru amit now it looks good let's create the bucket quickly yep the bucket is there so the second important thing or the second step is we need to upload a object or a file what we call so let's create an uh, upload an object now from our local computer add files all right let's upload a small documentation link let's upload this as a reference like we'll be demonstrating this file for the transitioning between different storage class so let's verify whether the file is there or not yes so now the object is there we don't call it file as mentioned we call it object whenever uh, whatever thing we put in the buckets uh, just for uh, the theory so let's now implement object life cycle so it's under the uh, just remember object life cycles always operates at the bucket level so this is the bucket we have created let's go to the management tab now under the management tab we can see create life cycle rules let's go ahead and click it we can name anything like demo life cycle anything we can name and there is one interesting part here the prefix so let's say if all my files within a bucket starts with kind of documentation or something we can write document something like that right so you got to check what the file names are on your bucket where you want to do the uh, object life cycle it can be like uh, for parquet file i have seen in a real project it's something like load uh, four zeros and all so you can write this so that it targets only these files not the entire uh, uh, files in the bucket uh, we can uh, limit the scope this is the option one option second option is apply to all the objects in the bucket so if we click here will be one warning sign we know that our uh, bucket contains just one file so we are least bothered and this is just a dummy file even so we are not even bothered so i'll uh, click on apply to all the objects in the bucket so just remember as mentioned that life cycle uh, will operate at the bucket level so that's why you can see this option so let's uh, go ahead and uh, create uh, th there are uh, different flavors to it like move the versions between storage class so that's what were our intention was that is move from standard tier to infrequent zone let me show you the architecture diagram for a clear view so here goes our architecture diagram will be implementing this for the first 35 days it will be in standard s3 tier so let's uh, we also need to expire or delete the object after 120 days if you look so let's go ahead and click this expire current version of the object there will be a timing mentioned below i'll uh, come uh, in a bit delete the expired deleted markers in complete multi part objects so multi part objects are nothing but let's say if your one file are divided into five parts uh, let me give you an example let's say there is a 1 gig 1 gb of file you have divided in five parts to uh, let's say 200 mb each so that is called multi part uploads we'll come at this concept later uh, but this is not uh, required but i'm um, just given you a brief idea let's select this as well so if you look here there are variety of flavors or the storage classes the architecture diagram it says after 35 days we need to move to standard ia or infrequent access so let's go ahead and do this this is standard infrequent access i have selected it let's give the number 
as per the architecture diagram. After 90 days, we are moving it to Glacier. So let's implement this. We'll go ahead by clicking Add Transition. Let's, um, uh, there is no mention of anything, so we can uh, write anything. Uh, glacier Instant Retrieval, Glacier Flexible. So anything, whatever you want. So let's go ahead uh, and do this, formerly known as Glacier, um, this one. Let's give it 90 as per the architecture diagram. So just uh, acknowledge, I acknowledge this thing. You need to acknowledge this. So here comes the expiration or deletion of the objects. If we refer to the architecture diagram, which I, I have created, after 120 days, we need to delete the object. That is our text file or the sample file which I have uploaded in S3. So let's give the number 120. And let's uh, delete incomplete multi-part uploads. So if you look here, it is the same architecture diagram, right? Let's uh, note this. Day 0, objects uploaded after 35 days. Objects move to infrequent access. Check this. After 35 days, standard infrequent access. After 90 days, glacier. So check. After day 90, it moves to glacier. And after 120 uh, days, objects expire. See? Day 120, delete object or this is the expire. So this is the exact architecture diagram which we have learned in the theory and which we are implementing in real life. You can do this in real life projects as well, especially in the banking projects where you can show your managers that you are saving cost. You can show this to save cost, show them that a glacier uh, costs around 100, uh, like um, 1 terabyte, just $2 uh, we can store it. I've uh, shown you in the previous video and the uh, like theory part, what I can say. So let's go ahead and create rule. If any kind of error will be seen, see, delete multi-part object after it should be greater than zero. So let's increase it to one. Create rule. Yep, the rule is created. So how we know the uh, rule is in action or it's live. So let's, uh, I, I know I can click here and see everything, but let's, let me show you how we can uh, see, the, uh, see this uh, from the scratch. So let's say we have opened our bucket. This one is our bucket name. This one is the file or the object what we have uploaded. Under the management tab, you'll be seeing the name of the lifecycle rule. Just select this and click on view lifecycle configuration, view details. Just to verify that this is in action or implemented, you can see the entire life cycle it's implemented so that's the tutorial for life cycle i hope it will save your cost in real life projects or your business so thank you so much for watching this video